Hello and welcome everyone. Today's presentation is ESICM guidelines on fluid therapy. This is the part one of the guidelines. So the first question that they are answering is should albumin versus crystalloid be used for volume expansion in adult critically ill patients in general? No such specific population. For that the recommendation is use crystalloids rather than albumin for volume expansion. This is a conditional recommendation. The certainty is moderate certainty. The background is albumin is believed to be more effective in retaining the intravascular volume and maintaining the oncotic pressure. And it is suggested that 1 is to 3 volume expansion ratio for albumin versus crystalloid, which means that if you give 1 ml of albumin, you need 3 ml of crystalloids. So this will result in less interstitial edema. Now the challenges to the oncotic pressure theory is that physiologists suggest filtration in the micro vessels plays a role. Now recent RCT findings show that there is no significant advantage of albumin over crystalloid in patient centered outcomes. The SAFE trial showed variable albumin to saline volume ratio that is 1 is to 1.2 and 1 is to 1.6. This is basically because of the fact that now what we think is it is the glycocalyx damage which makes the albumin seep out and removes this 1 is to 3 ratio. So the summary of the evidence that we have till now is that in terms of mortality there is no difference between albumin and crystallites. We had 16 trials with 12,000 patients in which we did not find any significant difference and this was with very high certainty. Uh, regarding renal replacement, no significant difference. We had five trials with 3,500 patients. Again, a little low level of certainty. Regarding mechanical ventilation, no difference, high certainty. ICU length of stay, it might not be affected, but it is with low certainty. Hospital length of stay, no effect, but again, the evidence is slightly uncertain. Quality of life, no data is available. The balance of effect, the cost of albumin is a significant thing which we must keep in mind. And regarding the cost effectiveness, there are very limited trials. And uh, especially in the limited setups, it may not be of any utility as such. For equitable resource usage, widespread albumin use may negatively impact equity and albumin is often unavailable in resource limited settings. So albumin is derived from blood and making it a limited resource. Generally acceptable to most patients but may be avoided due to product origin and allergic reactions in some patients. So albumin inherently has a lot of problems with it and with that if we don't find any benefit so the conclusion is given in all the considerations the panel conditionally recommends crystalloids over albumin for volume expansion the unresolved questions are we need in more studies regarding the different preparations of albumin and concentration that are available the interaction between albumin effects with the concurrent crystalloid administration the next is should albumin versus crystalloid be used in septic patients now we are going into specific patient subgroups the recommendation is use crystalloids this is a conditional recommendation again with moderate certainty. The background again is same decreased vascular tone, increased venous capacitance. It distributes into the interstitial and the intracellular space, especially with impaired endothelial integrity leading to loss of effect. So it is associated with organ dysfunction in sepsis. The advantage of albumin is greater plasma expansion, maintaining the oncosity. Uh, apart from that, it has also many pleiotropic effects. So the summary of evidence, mortality, no benefit, nine trials, RRT, no benefit, five trials, ICU length, no effect, ventilator, no difference, mechanical ventilation, no effect, overall did not favor albumin over crystalloids. So additional considerations, again, as we have previously discussed, the cost and availability of albumin, specific, specific patient groups like benefit of hypoalbuminemia, large volume crystalloids and septic shock. This could be potential areas where we can find, but then the study has never been done in such population, so it's not sure as of now. Safe trial, if you look at the subgroup, no clear benefit with low serum albumin also if you give albumin. So the conclusion is conditional recommendation to use crystalloids in septic patients. The unresolved questions are fluid choice in septic patients remain to be discussed with more details regarding the phases and how to use them. Albumin, its role in resuscitation is quite unclear. And regarding the spe uh, specific population that we have discussed, that is hypoalbuminemia, large volume crystalloid resuscitation, and what actually constitutes a large volume resuscitation and septic shock, these are potential areas where albumin can have a potential effect, and we need trials in these areas. And uh, of course, for resource limited setup, we need to also to evaluate the use of albumin and crystalloid, especially the cost benefit. Uh, again, as I have previously described, the cost effectiveness need to be seen. Uh, the question three is the role of albumin versus crystalloid in acute respiratory failure. The recommendation is use crystalloids. Now it is a conditional risk, uh, recommendation, but very low certainty of evidence as of now. The background is ARDS, there is capillary permeability issues, fluid accumulation. So more fluids will result in more problems and uh, correct hemodynamic instability is important. Improving the tissue perfusion is important. So optimal fluid needs to be given. So what is the summary of our evidence? Three RCTs, 200 patients till now. The SAFE trial had 123 with 7,000 patients, but not stratified based on acute respiratory failure. 
other studies uh, 46 and 24 patients only so no significant difference in terms of mortality other outcomes no other outcomes reported from this population and did not favor albumin or crystalloid so a very small population that was from a very old trial and uh, so very low grade of evidence additional consideration as we have already discussed the cost factor is there so the conclusion is go with crystalloids because we need more trials as we will discuss now there is a lack of trials over here and of course we also need these trials to look at the cost effectiveness now albumin crystalloids in traumatic brain injury the recommendation is isotonic saline rather than albumin it's a conditional recommendation with a very low certainty of evidence the remarks are that existing rcts compare isotonic saline but not balanced solutions to albumin now the background is focusing on maintaining adequate cerebral perfusion is important in traumatic brain injury by giving fluids and vasopressors. The safety concerns were raised after the SAFE trial with 4% albumin. The summary of evidence says that RCTs, the only RCT is safe with limited subgroup analysis on day 28 mortality was higher with albumin. But as we already have discussed, it's a very small population, not part, so low certainty of evidence, long term mortality, again, very high in albumin, but very low certainty of evidence, neurological outcome, less favorable to albumin and low certainty of evidence intracranial pressures higher with albumin so based on all this we also have some mechanistic insights that is hypotonic albumin is 260 which is hypotonic which makes it worse for uh, traumatic brain injury animal studies show that hypotonicity results in negative outcomes so balance of benefit and harm favors the isotonic saline and as we've already discussed the certainty is very low the conclusion go with isotonic saline unresolved issues are hypo oncotic albumin is being used so we can use hyperocortic albumin and see how its effects are that is 20 percent or 25 percent albumin regarding the next question that is albumin crystalloid in patients who are perioperative or bleeding or at risk of bleeding in that the recommendation is use crystalloids rather than albumin it is again a conditional recommendation with very low certainty of evidence the background of this being dilutional coagulopathy because of the crystalloids is there so if i give albumin i will be using less volume so probably my coagulopathy will be less and uh, trauma studies, low volume crystalloids associated with reduced coagulopathy, blood transfusion and mortality. So let's see what is the summary of evidence. Systematic analysis with nine trials comparing albumin with crystalloids in this particular group. Six trials, major vascular surgery, three in trauma, mostly conducted more than 15 years ago, no effect on mortality. Nine trials, AKI, no effect, low certainty. Blood transfusion, numerous small trials, no significant difference, poor uncertainty. And uh, balance of harm and benefit, uh, it definitely doesn't favor albumin in any way and uh, additional consideration that we must take are as we have already discussed the cost equity availability so concluding crystallites to be preferred over albumin in this particular group the unresolved questions are most evidence is coming from very old trials which are already 15 years and more old so to better understand fluid choice we need more contemporary rcts with better subgroups albumin crystalloid in cirrhotic patients question number six so the recommendation here is to use albumin rather than crystalloid and uh, it is again a conditional recommendation with very low certainty of evidence. The background being uh, in cirrhotic patients, there is increased pangnic volume and relative central hypovolemia. And the albumin use enhances the intravascular volume and provides antioxidants and anti-inflammatories, toxins removal. So albumin is a commonly used drug in decompensated cirrhosis, ascites, encephalopathy, infection, HRS in these groups. So the summary of evidence is that there are three relevant RCTs focusing on critically ill patients with cirrhosis. Mortality shows no statistical difference. RRT, no significant difference. Balance of benefit and harm favors albumin, but overall certainty is very low. Now, uh, additional consideration is the cost issue for which we have almost very less data. And especially data from low and middle income countries is very, very lacking. So there is an increased cost and reduced equity if we consider albumin in the recommendations. But we conclude by saying that there's a conditional recommendation to use albumin over crystalloid in this particular group. The unresolved questions are need to evaluate the volume expansion that we actually get. And of course, 20% versus 5% albumin is a very important thing and cost considerations. Question number seven, balanced salt solution versus isotonic in general. In that, the use of balanced crystalloids rather than isotonic saline for volume expansion in acute critically ill patient is the recommendation. This is again a conditional recommendation with low certainty of evidence. The priority use in setting of limited supply is to prioritize balanced crystalloids for patients requiring large volumes and those with hyperchloremia or acidosis. And alternative use of isotonic is acceptable when balanced salt solution is unavailable. Regarding specific cases, consider isotonic saline in hypochloremia and metabolic alkalosis. So this thing has to be kept in mind when reading these recommendations. The background, of course, is that commonly using the crystalloid solution, that is the sodium chloride, where we have a very large load of chloride, results in what is called as hyperchloremic acidosis. And this hyperchloremic acidosis is associated with AKI. Now, balanced salt solution have lower chloride levels and they accommodate the 
enhanced by using other organic enhancements that is lactates acetates gluconates and other cations in place of the sodium that is potassium calcium magnesium and the summary of evidence is that systematic review with 11 studies 35000 patients nine rcts uh, in that the mortality shows no difference 90 day mortality no difference bayesian analysis the prior probability of reduced mortality with balanced salt solution was 91% with all trials so if you are using properly then the balanced salt solution has a very high probability of success so individual patient data meta analysis the odds ratio of 90 day mortality was slightly less with uh, balanced salt solution so overall findings are that balanced salt solution probably result in slightly reduction in the mortality which is very very slight and no difference in terms of rrt low certainty of evidence ventilator free days modest certainty of evidence vasopressor high certainty hospital length of stay moderate certainty so regarding the benefit and harm it favors the balanced salt solutions in place of the isotonic saline the cost is a factor as balanced salt solutions are slightly more expensive but we need to do a cost benefit analysis there has been some analysis but it has not shown much difference between the two groups availability and equity is a issue especially in low income countries uh, but the conclusion is it's a conditional recommendation to use balanced salt solution in place of isotonic saline prioritize balanced crystalloids for patients needing large volume hyperchloremia and acidosis alternative isotonic for hypochloremia and alkalosis or low volume the unresolved questions are need for different balanced salt solutions to be compared amongst each other the important of critically ill patient including regular chloride measurement and prompt intervention for hypochloremia is important the next is consider variation in the fluid cost and lab tests across various settings so next is uh, in sepsis balanced versus isotonic the recommendation is again used balanced in place of isotonic it's a conditional recommendation with low certainty of evidence the background here is same that in sepsis there is a high chance of volume use and with increased chloride there is chance of acute kidney injury so balanced salt solutions are very popular the summary is with uh, six studies with 7000 patients where mortality did not significantly reduce the mortality regarding the bayesian analysis uh, the posterior mortality reduction is around 90% if you are using balanced salt solution now there is slight reduction in the mortality if you see over here with balanced salt solutions regarding other outcomes there is no significant difference and with very low certainty of evidence regarding the benefit and harm it favors the balanced salt solution the certainty is low as we have already discussed the conclusion is that is a condition recommendation to use balanced salt solution in septic patients regarding the research recommendations we need more comparative trials with different balanced salt solutions with sepsis now question number 9 this is balanced versus isotonic in traumatic brain injury this is going to be an important one in this you prefer isotonic saline over balanced salt solution now this is again a conditional recommendation with very low certainty of evidence Uh, most evidence is from rcts using balanced salt solution with near normal osmolarity avoid hypotonic balanced salt solutions like ringel lactate and acetate in patients with tbi so when you are comparing the studies you must keep in mind these things uh, regarding the background uh, uh, the fluid osmolarity is critical in traumatic brain injury which has been proven in both human and animal trials isotonic saline with a osmolarity of 308 is slightly higher than plasma and considered better balanced salt solution a very variable osmolarity across various preparations so they can impact the mortality regarding the actual summary of evidence there are three rcts with low risk of bias in this they found the mortality was uh, similar in the two groups compared to iso isotonic saline regarding the bayesian analysis there is a higher probability of mortality with balanced salt solutions regarding other outcomes there is no uncertain no certainty of evidence and very little effect to be reported on uh, overall certainty is very low and the conclusion is that there is a conditional recommendation to use isotonic saline over balanced salt solution in traumatic brain injury avoid ringel lactates though because it is a very low osmolarity and unresolved questions are more trials are needed to compare the various formulations of balanced salt solutions with isotonic saline now question number 10 balanced versus isotonic in kidney injury in this the recommendation is to use balanced salt solutions a conditional recommendation with very low certainty of evidence the background here is same the chloride high will result in injury so the summary of evidence there is one small rct uh, which showed no significant difference and there is some indirect evidence of from renal transplant the best fluid trial the pool data of eight rcts showed balanced salt solution has reduced requirement of rrt Uh, even uh, reduced requirement of mechanical ventilation though low certainty of evidence delayed graft function probability is reduced hospital length of stay is unaffected overall certainty is though very less to extrapolate this data to critically ill patients cost is definitely as we have already discussed is a issue in resource poor startups but the recommendation is to use balanced salt solutions over isotonic saline regarding unresolved research issues more data is required on choice of balanced salt solution versus isotonic saline in aki Finally, the last question: Should small volume hypertonic or isotonic crystalloids be used for volume expansion in adult critically ill patients? So, what is the role of that? In that, use isotonic saline rather than small volume hypertonic solutions in adult critically ill patients. This is again a conditional recommendation with very low certainty of evidence. The background here is that 
the hypotonic cell line is seen as an alternative for managing hypovolemia, hemorrhagic and septic shock due to its immediate intravascular volume expansion and reduced volume that I'm actually giving. The advantages is that there is improved hemodynamic, anti-inflammatory effects and beneficial effects of resuscitation without the volume harms of high volume. However, the disadvantage is the high chloride that the patient is getting, especially in the setup of acidosis, coagulopathy and renal failure. In traumatic brain injury, no improvement in short term and long term outcomes has been seen with these fluids. So the summary of evidence is that 17 RCTs were isolated from various population groups that is trauma, septic, hypovolemia and surgery. In this, they found no significant reduction in terms of mortality and other uh, RRT, the ventilator free days, the ICU free days were not significantly different. No difference in hospital stay and very low certainty of evidence. The benefit and harm did not favor hypertonic saline. So the recommendations are that you must keep in mind the availability and the cost of hypertonic saline as well. So the conclusion is conditional recommendation to use isotonic saline over small volume hypertonic fluids. The unresolved question is identify subgroups who may benefit with hypertonic saline. Thank you for your patience.